chapter 5 we begin looking at when we recognize revenue. There's three points in time we can recognize revenue. We can recognize revenue at the delivery of a service or good, after the delivery of a service or good, or before the delivery of a service or good. So let's talk about at the point of delivery. That's what you've done in all of Accounting 111, 101, etc. We recognize revenue at the moment we complete our service or provide the good to the customer. Um, the reason being, most of the time at that point, we've met the revenue recognition requirement. In order to recognize revenue, two things must exist. One, we must um, have earned the revenue. So in other words, we've provided the good, we've provided the service. And the second thing that must exist is the fact that we expect to collect payment for the work that we did. Well, most of the time that happens because one, would you provide the service if you didn't expect collect it? Or would you give somebody a good if you didn't expect collect it? Um, that's just the way it works. That's how we end up recognizing our revenue. Now, there are certain situations in which we must recognize revenue after the point of sale. And typically that comes through when we're talking about land brokers where uh, they finance the land themselves and they don't expect collection or they don't know about the collection. In that case, we have to defer it. Now, if we are not recognizing revenue at point of sale, we're recognizing it after a point of sale, there are two methods that we may have to use. Either the installment sales method or the cost recovery method. And then the last thing is it is possible to recognize revenue before completion. And that's on your long-term contracts. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in, in the next lecture when we actually talk about um, percentage of completion method. That's a before the item is completed. So for right now, let's look at point of delivery and then let's look at after delivery, which is the, uh, the installment sales method and the cost recovery method. So let's look at this example. On July 1st, 2013, the Foster Company sold inventory to Slate Corporation for $300,000. So that's the sales price of our goods. Terms of the sale call for a down payment of $75,000 and then three annual installments of $75,000 each um, due on July 1st, beginning July 1st, 2014. So that's, we did $75,000 down on July 1st, 2013, and then every July thereafter for three more payments, we're going to collect $75,000. Each installment also will include interest on the unpaid balance applying an appropriate interest rate. Now, we're going to ignore interest in this problem simply because that's not our goal. Interest is earned at the time it accrues no matter what. So we're not worried about that at this point. We're looking solely at the revenue on the sale of the good. The inventory cost Foster $120,000. The company uses the perpetual inventory system, which in other words, we, we recognize gross profit at the moment of the sale. Compute the amount of gross profit to be recognized from the installment sale in 2013, 14, 15, 16 using point of delivery revenue recognition. Now, for point of delivery, it doesn't matter when you collect cash or what your gross profit is. When you actually uh, do point of delivery, what matters there is the fact that we have completed the service and we expect to actually uh, collect the payment. So if that is the case, when we go in, what we can do is we actually recognize all the gross profit in the year the service is actually completed. So for gross profit, first thing we need to do is calculate the gross profit. What is the gross profit? Well, the gross profit is going to be the sales minus the cost of goods sold. Remember on your income statements last time, you took the sales revenue minus cost of goods sold. That equals our gross profit excuse me, a little typo there, equals our gross profit. So in this case, what is our gross profit? Well, we take our sales revenue, which was 300000 that's the amount we sold the good for, minus our cost of goods sold, which was one twenty. That gives us a gross profit of 180000 Now, under the point of delivery, that's what we've always done. We recognize all of that at one point in time. The moment the sale is complete, under point of delivery, we get to recognize the full amount of the gross profit. So what will we recognize in future years? Well, if you've already recognized all the gross profit, you recognize absolutely nothing in the future years for a total gross profit of 180. Now the second part of this says we'll journalize it. Well, these are the journals that we've always done. Okay. So in order to journalize this, what we would do is we'd record the sale itself. And to do that, we would go on July 1st, 2013 and it asks us to do just the entries for 2013 and 2014. So July 1st, 2013. 
what would we record? Well, we would do the installment receivables, and that would be recorded for the, the full amount, 300000 Okay, and then we're going to credit sales revenue because under this method we get to recognize all the revenue up front at the point of sale. The moment that good is delivered, we get to recognize revenue. Now what else do we need to do? Well, under perpetual, the minute we recognize the revenue, we have to recognize the cost of goods sold. So we're going to debit the cost of goods sold for the $120,000 cost, and we're going to remove the actual item from our inventory at $120,000. Now, what are we going to do in future years? Well, in 2014, what's going to happen is we're simply going to collect the installment. So we're going to receive cash of $75,000. Well, excuse me. 2013, we're going to receive the cash of $75,000 for that down payment, and then we're going to reduce the installment receivable for that down payment. Now, there is more than one way to record that $75,000. You could have recorded it up here. You could put cash $75, installment receivable $225. Um, either way would have worked, but I just want you to see the, the correlation here. And then in 2014, the last thing it's going to ask us to do in 2014, again, is that next collection. So every year after July 1st, 2013, you're going to collect one payment. That is the anticipated result. So that is what we're going to record. And your entry would be the same in 2015, 2016 to record that collection. So that is just a straight point of sale. You've done those before. We haven't used installment receivables, but we have used accounts receivable. Debit accounts receivable, credit sales revenue. The reason we call it installment is because there's more than one payment that's due. Okay, That goes in, and then our cost of goods sold. We recognize $180,000 immediately in gross profit because we recorded the revenue, we recorded the cost of goods sold, and by doing that, we've recognized $180,000 in gross profit at the time of the sale. Now, what happens, though, if we are applying the installment sales method? Well, what the installment sales method says is, okay, you cannot recognize it at point of delivery because um, usually collectability is sort of an issue. Now, again, this is very rare. We do not use these two methods a lot unless you are a cash bro or a land broker where you're selling land, you're financing it, and, and you do not... Uh, collectability in that case is always suspect because the terms of the, the collection is so long. But in this case, what we're looking at, though, is the fact that we don't anticipate maybe collecting the goods. We sold it, but they may not pay us in this case. So we've performed the service. Collectability is questionable. If that's the case, you have to either apply the installment sales method or the cost recovery method. So let's look at the installment sales method first. Again, the same rules apply. We know that we sold the good for 300000 and that it's cost us 120000 now, in this method, under the installment sales method, we do not get to collect gross or recognize, excuse me, gross profit until payment is actually collected. So, each year we anticipate seventy-five thousand. So, if we do indeed collect seventy-five thousand each year, what we need to do is determine how much of that is for cost recovery and how much of that is for gross profit. Okay. So, when we're looking at this, how are we going to do it? Well, the first thing you need to find is what we call the the gross profit percentage. And to get our gross profit percentage, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to actually, oops, excuse me, take our 180,000 gross profit, and we're going to divide it by 300,000, oops, 300,000 in revenue. And when you do that, that's going to tell you what your gross profit is. So let's see, uh, 180,000, and we divide that by 300,000. That gives us uh, 60%. So when we're looking at this, what that tells us is every time we collect a payment, we get to recognize 60% of that as gross profit. Okay, So 60% would be gross profit, and the other 40% would go to cost recovery. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, we collect 75000 on July 1st, 2013. That's our first collection. So of that, 40% of it will go to cost recovery. So 75000 times 0.4 gives us 30000 And that leaves us with 60% or 45000 going to gross profit. So when it asks us how much gross profit we're going to recognize this year, we're going to recognize 40000 Now, assuming we collect the same amount each year, 
every time we collect a payment we're going to recognize the exact same amount so that brings us to a total collection of 300,000 that cost recovery of 120 and then we recognize a total of 180,000 so again under the installment sales method to find the gross profit all you need to do is find the gross profit percentage take the 180,000 divide that by the 300,000 and that tells you that each payment that is collected you get to recognize 60 percent of that payment. Take the cash you collect for that period, multiply it by 60 percent, and that gives you the amount of gross profit you're going to recognize. Okay. Now assuming that the payment is collected evenly throughout the years, you would do the exact same amount. In the end, if you 100 percent collect all the money for this, you should recognize the 180 in gross profit. Now how do we go about journalizing um, this instance, the installment sales method. Well, on July 1st, 2013, what we need to remember is we still have the installment receivable going on our books. No matter what, we still get to record that installment receivable at 300. That's the amount owed to us. Now, the second thing we need to still do is we always have to take the inventory off the books. We have a good that was 120,000. Do we still control it? No. We handed that good off to someone else at the point at this point in time. So we no longer have ownership of that good. It belongs to someone else. Now, the last thing, notice how we have 180000 which represents our gross profit. Under the installment sales, we're not allowed to recognize that. So what we do is we call it deferred gross profit. So we go in and we say deferred gross profit, and that's the amount of the actual gross profit on day one. We defer it for future periods. Notice how there is no sales revenue and there is no cost of goods sold yet. All of it is embedded into that gross profit, that 180000 Now what happens? Well, again, July 1st, 2013, we do the first collection on this atom. So when we go in and we collect it, we're going to collect cash, one, for 75000 So we reduce our installment receivable by that 75000 the amount we actually received. Now what's next? Well, the next thing that we need to do is every time we collect a payment, notice what happens. We collect 75, we recognize gross profit of 45,000. So every single time we collect a payment on this, we're actually going to go in and we're going to recognize the gross profit. So when we do that, we need to reduce the deferred gross profit amount. We're going to reduce that amount down. And when we reduce it down, we reduce it by the 45,000 anticipated gross profit, the 60%. Okay, and then what do we call it? Well, at that point, we call it realized gross profit. I can not type today, so realized gross profit. And that's going to go in at 45000 Now, it asks us to do 2014's entry, so what would we do in 2014? Well, again, under the installment sales, every single time you collect a payment, you're going to have the exact same entries take place. You're going to recognize the receipt of cash, and then you're going to recognize 60% of it as gross profit. You're like, well, what if we didn't collect the full 75? It doesn't matter whatever amount you collect. So let's just, for the fun of it, go back and say they only paid us 60,000 here. So had they only paid us 60,000, then our gross profit recognized would still be 60%, so it would be 36,000. So your gross profit that you recognize is adjusted based on how much you cash you actually collect from that sale each year. Okay. So again, under the installment sales method, to get your cash and your gross profit, you're going to take your 180,000 gross profit divided by 300,000. That gives you a 60% gross profit percentage. So the gross profit percentage then is applied to each payment. So you collect 75,000, 60% of that will be recognized as gross profit that term. When we do our entries, the first thing we have to do is defer the gross profit. We're not allowed to recognize sales revenue or cost of goods sold under this method until we physically collect a payment. So that's the reason we defer this gross profit. Then as we collect payments, we get to recognize a piece of that gross profit as actual realized gross profit. Okay, so that is the installment sales method. Now that's not the only method we can employ. The next method that we could use is the cost recovery method. Okay, now under the cost recovery method, the, the same rules apply. We've got 75000 in cash that we collect, and we're assuming we did actually collect these, just so you can see what's going on there, for a total of 300000 in cash that we're collecting. 
Now, under the cost recovery, what it states is you are not allowed to recognize gross profit until you fully recuperate the cost of this item. So in other words, if the item costs us 120000 every payment that we receive must go to that cost recovery until we have fully recuperated the cost. So in 2013, when we collect 75000 how much of that's going to go to cost recovery? Well, remember, we have 120000 in cost, so all of it's going to go because we have not yet recuperated. Okay? And how do we look at that? Well, remember, we have to fully recoup our cost. So if you have 120000 in cost and you only had 75000 in payment, that means you still need to recover, let's see, 120 minus our 75, you still need to recover 45,000 needs to be recovered still. Until you fully recover costs, you are not allowed to recognize gross profit. So in 2013, we would not recognize any gross profit because we haven't fully recovered our costs. Now, in 2014, let's look at that. Now, how much have we collected in 2014? Well, remember, the cost of the asset is 120. At this point, we've collected two payments of 75. So we've collected a total of 150,000. Have we exceeded the cost? Absolutely. We've exceeded the cost by 30,000. So that's the amount of gross profit we would recognize. And 45,000 would go to cost recovery. Again, the cost recovery totals now is 120,000. OK, do you all see that? Once we recover the cost, every dollar above the cost goes to gross profit. So in 2015, we receive a $75,000 payment. Well, we've already recouped our costs, so nothing's going to go to cost recovery. All of that is going to go to gross profit. Once you recover your cost, every dollar over cost is recognized as gross profit. And again, in 2016, since we fully recovered, nothing goes to cost. 75000 goes to gross profit for a total recognition of gross profit of 180000 So in this method, again, it's similar to the installment sales in that we defer gross profit, but what's different is we are not allowed to recognize gross profit until we truly recuperate the cost of the asset. So in this case, we have to recover the 120000 in cash before we're allowed to recognize any of it as gross profit. Now, what would our journal entries be? Well, July 1, 2013, would be exactly the same. The installment sales method, and I'm going to uh, cheat a little bit, I'm going to copy this down just because I don't feel like typing it all. The installment sales method and the gross profit method, the entries are virtually the same. The only difference is the timing of the entries. And then July 1st, 2013, we would show the collection of that 75000 in cash. Now the difference here, we are not allowed to recognize any gross profit at this point. So that's it. We're done with 2013 under this method because notice how much gross profit could we recognize? Nothing. All of it went to cost recovery, so no gross profit has been recognized yet. Now, July 1st, 2014, though, we do collect the payment. So we're going to go in and we're going to collect the $75,000 payment. Now, what else do we need to do? Well, do we recognize any gross profit in 2014? Yes, we figured up 30000 in gross profit recognition in 2014. So on July 1st, 2014, we would need to go in and reduce our deferred gross profit by the 30000 anticipated collect or anticipated gross profit there. And then we need to recognize that as realized gross profit. Whoops, I hit the back button one too many times there. There we go, 30,000. Now in 2014, what we, or 15, excuse me, in 2015, what would our entries be? Well, the cash would be the same. We'd collect 75,000. But then when we went in to do the actual gross profit, 75,000 here would be recognized as gross profit in 2015 and 2016. So hopefully this helps you see a little bit better how to do point of delivery, how to do the, the installment sales method, and how to do the cost recovery method.